I think we need to take into account that there have been considerable changes in how the astronomers view Pluto. And in my world, when the astronomers view something differently, astrologers should also look at it and consider that we might have to have a different take or a different meaning. Um, so just recently, um, they have had um, a, a big mission, um, a space rocket if you like, on its way to Pluto, on its way to the Kuiper Belt where the Pluto is. Um, and um, in order for them to, to launch that mission and get it in the right place so it actually gets to the planet. They did some preliminary observations of Pluto so that they could um, get all their, you know, their stuff right. And um, so a naval astronomer um, was actually observing Pluto in 1978 um, when amazingly um, some, a bulge started to appear on the side of Pluto, a bulge of light. So I suppose this guy's thinking, OK. Um, so anyway, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger as he observed. And in the end, he realized what he was looking at was another planet. Pluto had always had a moon, a very big moon, um, which we hadn't seen because it was behind. And so as Pluto turned, we suddenly saw um, this big moon, which in actual fact has been designated a planet, a dwarf planet. Um, and this changed so much because all the assessments of Pluto's size had to change because with the emergence of this new planet, then the assumed light which had come from Pluto, which led us to believe a certain mass, that had to change. It reduced our opinion of how big Pluto was. Suddenly we've got two where there used to be one. Um, this in astrology indicates duality. Something is hidden. Something was in the underworld, Pluto, and emerged for us to see. Um, and I think this is a very powerful, symbolic um, event for us in astrology. The other thing we have to understand about Pluto now is that, okay, he was demoted and this caused a fuss, and some people said he should stay um, in the lineup with the classical planets. But what we have to understand about that is the classical planets are all on one plane, they're on, in a flat line. Um, and then Pluto was the oddball because he orbited at a, a, an angle to the ecliptic, 28 degrees in actual fact, above the ecliptics. That always made him a bit odd. And so we need to consider that maybe like in an old cowboy and Indian Western movie, so you've got the cowboys in the middle there and there's hills around and one Indian appears on the crest of the hill. And everybody goes, OK, that's Pluto. Um, and then the next thing is we've got loads of Indians dozens and thousands of Indians all coming down. And, and like in the movie where we saw the one Indian, Pluto is that one Indian, he is in a gang of thousands. He's in an area which we now know to have dozens and, and dozens and dozens of, of fairly large objects, some of them as big as planets, um, and lots of rock and ice and this sort of stuff. So that's his family. I mean, this is called the Kuiper Belt and it exists around the very outside of the, the solar system as we knew it. And if we were to go back in space and look back, it would look like um, bees all buzzing around the solar system. So not, no longer on the flat plane, now we've got things all over the solar system. So we need to bear this in mind. What, what we thought was one is now many. Um, and interestingly, you know, this parallels the discoveries that science makes when it looks into the tiny, it found, finds so much more than it thought. When we look at Pluto, we find so much more than we thought. And we have to understand that Pluto is part of a family that are, in astrology, as hugely um, influential as he is, that all his mates are as, as powerful as he is, and we have to understand them. We've got five more Plutos, um, and we need to understand these guys and, and start to work with them, um, hopefully to, um, to, to take them on board and to learn about the transformation and the evolution which they are offering to us as symbols. Mm -hmm.